I have also heard it referenced as washed in the blood of Jesus, meaning washed uh, free of my sin because of his sacrifice. Covered in the blood still sounds like this idea of the blood is a protective force. And if you cover something, you're putting it over top of it, right? So you're covered, you're, you're, you're enveloped by that saving power of Jesus in terms of being covered in the blood. But you're correct in saying that the genealogy of Jesus does point back to people who would be recognized as people of Afro-Asiatic ancestry. And I use that hyphenated term um, deliberately because his lineage is connected to, as I said, um, Ruth, who was a Moabitess. And the Moabites are also recognized as having a link to the group that will go into the old Moorish Empire, the Al Moravids. That's why they're also known as the Moabita. Also the old Latin term Moabitarum, which is a reference also to the Moors in Northwest Africa. And this is going back to medieval Latin. So they're telling us that. And then that's, that's there, meaning we're, we're told that in the lineage of Jesus is Ruth. Not to mention, if you just want to take a more it's a common sense approach, the Hebrew people at their beginnings are understood to be a people that have a lot of intermarriage with the peoples of Africa. The Reverend Wesley Jones that taught, it was a book called Ethiopia and the Missing Link in Biblical History or something, something along those lines. It was published in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania in the 1940s. And he says that the genealogy of Jesus is definitely related to the Eth Ethiopian people. And that's no shock then for me when I'm reading that Strabo is making the same argument of making the connection between the ancient uh, Judeans and the Ethiopians. That's why it makes sense when Tacitus is making a connection between the uh, Jewish people, the Judean people, and the Egyptians, right? The Egyptians are an African people. Even though by that time, during the time of Tacitus, they clearly had intermarried quite a bit with the Greeks because of the Ptolemaic legacy, the Ptolemies being um, the rulers that came from Greece uh, with um, Alexander the Great or Alexander of Macedonia in the fourth century BC. But the bottom line is you see all this evidence of the people of um, ancient Greece and Rome knowing that the Hebrew people were an African and Asiatic people. If you want to say a mixed people of both, that's fine, but you're still, it still comes out as, as uh, if you will, uh, Moorish or Afro-Asiatic or Asiatic people. The, the whole legacy of the Madonnas, which relates to this. Um, the fact that you can find Black Madonnas, as they're called, that was the term used by art historians to reference these dark complexioned images of Mariam and Isa or Mary and Jesus, um, including one that is in Bethlehem from the 8th and 9th centuries, where Jesus clearly is dark brown with curly hair as is Marianne. And there's not one, this is what's so upsetting when people will hear, I, I heard about the Black Madonna, as if there's one. There are dozens of known, still existent, Black Madonnas. And the fact that this tradition goes back as far as it does, again illustrates that there were followers of the teachings of 
Jesus, who knew from common sense and geography, this man and his mother had to come from a place where people were of an olive and dark olive complexion, right? So these images, these icons are made. Ultimately, what happens? As Christianity becomes more and more a part of the Western world or the European world and, and identity, the image is changed, right? Because you're trying to get the new converts to see God in themselves and themselves in God, since that's the theology of Christianity, to give people then an image of Jesus that looked as he should uh, or would have looked in terms of as a man who was a dark olive complexioned Asiatic would not sit well, certainly with um, the leadership in European countries who were trying to um, instill in their people a sense of, of value in themselves and yet they're showing them images or an image that looks more like people from way out there, so to speak, in Africa and Asia. So in a way, one can kind of understand why the European world would Europeanize the image to accommodate their interests. It's for their earthly salvation. But the fact is, Jesus would not have been a European, and yet so many so-called black Christians continue to present him as such and not having the good sense that the Europeans even had for changing the image to accommodate essentially their psychological and emotional needs. And the irony of it is clearly Jesus would have looked more like a person of color or uh, like I said, an Afro-Asiatic person than a European.